All right. Now, speaking of the human brain, it is now inside a computer. Oh, wow. That's why you ended in brain, Brandon. What's up? That, that's why I ended my sentence with the brain. It was a perfect sentence. Oh, you're trying to plant a subconscious you, seed in my head like you, the, you they did with that guy? It. You missed it. You it was my fault. Oh, I, 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 I had a better one. Next thing you know, Brandon's committing acts of domestic terrorism because you planted ideas. <laughs> well, you know, <laughs> what else do you we're working my, on? My, my constitution no, I take is too that str- back. My, yeah, what the hell? <laughs> all, all, all actions are Brandon's and Brandon's alone. <laughs> no, my, my mental constitution is too strong to pierce through by the propaganda. But that's but, only because I made him think that. <laughs> right. But anyway, yeah, so this is a fun one. We got... An Australian startup called Cortical Labs has unveiled CL1, the world's first commercially available biological computer, and it's powered by actual human brain cells. I think we have the website on there. This is billed as a new class computing that merges living neurons with traditional silicone hardware to create machines that can learn, adapt, and even think like a human brain. Do we have the computer on there that we could show too? Why? So inside each shoebox, inside each shoebox size unit, lab-grown neurons cultivated from human stem cells, living on a silicone chip and supported by a built-in life support system. SBI uses a fraction of the energy consumed by current AI systems. A full server track of CL1 units consumes just a thousand watts, about the same as a hair dryer. And the CL1 starts shipping mid 2025 at. Thirty-five thousand dollars a unit. So, guys, are, who's getting one? I'm first in line. Yeah. Yeah. Why? Because this is a win for God for designing the best way to do things. Wow. Right? I, didn't, I didn't expect that from you. Yeah. Wow. I would think that you would think. I this mean, is, we have, which isn't one? this crossing the lines between transhumanism, though? No, but they, says transhumanism they, as it they, gets. They, they were <laughs> humble enough to go like, okay, God got this right. Let's go back to his design because it's the best. Well, that's why right? it's, it's slightly different. The way I see it differently is because it's not putting machines in us. It's putting, putting us, us in, in the machine. So we're like, that the, so we're like the, we're, no, it's not better. I don't know. I feel really creeped out by it, and I just want to say, of course, it would be Australia to try to do some. So let, let me ask you. That's like the test bed for the Think weird stuff. The energy savings. Literally, we we okay, guys. We talk about this all the time on this show, do we not? That Australia is show. the test kitchen of mm-hmm. the world yeah. because the cultural makeup of Australia is so similar to here in the U.S. and to other major Western countries that they'll test their weird shit over there. And this is the next Frankensteinian experiment. So l- l- let me it's ask you guys: box, Have Any of you ever read Dune? Like read the Dune? I series? heard the movie nah. is good, but no, I haven't yeah. seen it. No, nah, so there is. The backstory of of Dune, like they they have the brilliant people who basically function as human supercomputers, yeah. because they have outlawed AI and computers. Because thousands of years before Dune takes place, oh, the, 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 a, the AI machines rose up and tried to enslave humanity, and they had to fight a war to kill the thinking machines. So now there's no more computers. I am full on Butlerian jihad against this thing. That's what they called that campaign. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> the, the, the fact that we are now putting human brains into a computer and making them think for us, who thinks that's a good idea? Yeah. What possible benefit could there be to like, oh yeah, we have this server rack of little tiny captive brains that are plugged in that are running things for at what point do those brains develop enough thinking capacity to be like, hey, why are we sitting here enslaved by these people when we control all their stuff? Shouldn't That's we so true. reverse that on them? Oh, wait, and that uh, that brings up another point about feeling emotions because technically AI is not meant to feel emotions correct, but if mm-hmm. this thing is made up of human cells, human brain cells, and yep. does that therefore give it the capacity to be able to experience emotions as well? And emotions are the biggest drivers of behavior. So... You're absolutely right. Yeah, as soon as this thing starts feeling away, that's when total AI domination is going to happen. Shit, I better stop being nice to my chat GPT. Is this AI? It's coming. Is this AI, though? I mean, yeah. I mean, it's a human brain. No, no, the purpose of this is to have... This is so stupid. What? <laughs> no, 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 listen, listen. No, no, you're not stupid. I'm saying that. No, I know you're saying I'm not stupid. You uh, said this is stupid, that they were is, making this no, thing. No, it, no, this is not stupid. This is very smart, the way they're doing but it. But it's not AI. No, the stupid thing is is doing it, all right? You're, just, it, you're contradicting yourself. No, Brandon, <laughs> the people that are doing this, they're very smart people that are doing it. Okay. You're a smart person. But that word, we're going down this path is generally stupid. They were so busy asking whether they could, they never stopped to ask whether they should. That's it. Here's the thing, though. It's like physically impossible for the human race to have an idea, like understand how to do it and then not do it. Like that's never happened before. Like once you see a way to make something better, like we're going to do it. Oh, right, yeah, we're gonna do it. Yeah, it's like it's yeah. like it's like out of everything that we're wired to do, it's like make better stuff. 
that that that's why I think we we don't know it yet, and I say this all the time. And I hope this uh, this video goes out after after we're all dead. Uh, no. we, we we're already cooked. What do you mean? We are already like we are on a path that is unstoppable, Brent. All right, we're already on that path. That's why I call you a pessimist. Well, no, I'm not a pessimist. No, but, uh, I I agree with you. Imagine what the world would look like if tomorrow they just turned off chat GPT. Mm. If they turned off every large language model that has been made available We'd to us. Fine. Yeah. No, Dude, no, no but uh, things would be so yeah. disruptive. We have had that, that system for what? Like maybe a Only year? Only two years. Two years? Yeah. Two years. Think of how many people cannot function without being able to talk to chat GPT. I, it literally but, makes your brain atrophy. I really yeah. do believe I, that. When you become overly reliant I, I on it, it's that I, saying I, you I, don't I, use it, you lose it, and people are literally mm -hmm. using their still, reasoning and logical faculties. I still try to do one third of my writing workload mm -hmm. by hand. Yeah. yeah I, I refuse to, like to use chat GPT in writing. No, but <laughs> with my own brain. But Brandon, this is not good, and we're, we're already cooked. The thing is, oh my first gosh. of all, Brandon, first of all, we don't know how far along we are, all right? This, let me tell you guys, this is an arms race, all right? We have China on one corner, United States on the other corner. I don't even know if we can call it the and United States anymore. We have the technocrats that vaguely support the United States, and then we have the Chinese Communist Party, and this is a, this is a race. Mm -hmm. And it's there's going to there, there's gonna be no mercy, Brandon, no mercy on this race. And they're going to push it because they're going to see a China. Oh, China developed this. We're two weeks behind. And then they're... Brandon, this you're, you're is, this missing one. You're missing one what? important part. What, what am I missing? The globalist it's a story as, no, 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 it's, not a race. No, it's a story as old as time. There, we're not in a race. It's a fake race. We give China the technology to catch up to us to mm -hmm. scare our government and then to get them to spend money. Like the t Operation Stargate happened right around the same time as DeepSeek came out. You think China made DeepSeek by themselves? No, they didn't. They weren't supposed to be getting chips from NVIDIA, but they those chips made their way to China somehow. Just like All the chips. Mm -hmm. Yeah, just like Russia. Like During the Cold War, Russia wasn't able to make semiconductors, but guess what? We smuggled our tech secrets there so they were able to make semiconductors and we just kept propping them up to keep mm -hmm. them enough of a threat to keep spending money on the thing so it's not a real arms race like we could blow past we probably were way past China we let them catch up to us we're gonna blow past them again we're gonna let them catch up to us again and we, whenever we try well, to shake do you down think Congress that or do you not think that there could be a threat that we've gotten to the point where we have now created a monster that we cannot control with China yes no, no we can AI control them Brandon, the, the, the way we die in this scenario, <laughs> the way we die, and uh, uh, Stephen Hawking's before dying, this was his biggest fear. AI. It's, it's, no, it's called the singularity. Mm -hmm. You know, have you heard yeah. about the singularity? It's where they start um, it, it's being self-sufficient or when, thinking for when, themselves. No, no, it's, it, that's the, you have general intelligence, that's the first mark, yeah. and then after general intelligence, like, infects or, like, it spreads into enough things, and then we have dumbasses, like, I won't name someone, but it's... You know, someone that thought it was a good idea to get a Wi-Fi coffee maker. I don't know why I need Wi-Fi on my coffee maker. Yep. And all these dumbasses have it's like... It's called the Internet of Things. Well, they have Internet of Things, the things that you don't really need Internet on. Yeah. So everything is going to be connected with the Internet. Uh, we, we, we're going from chatbots to chat uh, to uh, AI agents. You know what an agent is? No. All right. That's, that's a good part. It's, it's evolution and agents, they're able to operate outside of the box that they're bounded, so they can keep on developing their, their own software, all right? So, yeah. the, 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 the Vault Conference <laughs> last year, and by the way, if you're interested in the Vault Conference, we have another one coming up this year. Great experience. Yeah, wait till you see what we're doing with AI yeah. this year. Yeah, we'll have, we'll have a chat link somewhere if you're, if you're interested in checking out Patrick Bet David at the Vault Conference. But last year, there was a, a keynote speech from Max Tegmark, mm. who is an AI ethicist and engineer and researcher. Uh, very fascinating. He's sitting down with Patrick and is talking about how large language models are being developed. Yeah. And this was the first time I ever heard about it, but apparently this is common knowledge among people in the know on AI, where he talked about, we don't know how it's being created. Mm -hmm. See, th this is the thing with large language models like ChatGPT and other similar products. They are based on neural networks. So we know the input that it's given and the output that it puts out. Everything in between is a complete mystery to us. Yeah. Even the people who have developed these things don't know how it's making those connections. So when it gets something wrong, you can't untrain it. You can't make it forget something. You can just try to correct it to get something more right than wrong. But these things are basically inventing themselves in a black box that not even their developers can look into. 
Like, how do you look at that and not see it as we are helping birth something evil into the world, allowing it to create itself and take on physical form. Yeah. And we're using it because we're too lazy to Google things, because we're too lazy to do our own research and read a book. Is it definitely evil, though, or is it just uh, scary and powerful? Man, I, I mean, it's, it's the you're things... the one who's most skeptical of power out of all of us. I, I, I don't see how you but don't I hate, think it's evil. I also evil. hate wasted potential. Yeah, that's true. It's like, it's the way in which it's utilized, right? Like, things could be used no, for no, no. good, the, they the could thing, be used for is, evil, but, how, but if you, but tr by, by trying to impose safeguards, you are also stunting growth and potential. So, yeah. you're, what, what, what determines whether it's good or bad is the moral compass that you wield when you utilize whatever it is in question. But look Amy, at the people Amy, putting the it. is that we're going to get to yeah. a point where we'll, we'll have no agency of what's going on, all right? And we're very past the point that we can put this back in the box. This is what it is. And from I've been reading a lot about this, Brandon. And from okay. what I heard, our only way out right now at the stage things are like how the thing, it doesn't get developed, it gets trained. Mm -hmm. And then it starts with agents, it starts training itself and getting better every time. We already lost control of that ship. And, and this is going to sound very weird. Like we are all against transhumanism. Mm -hmm. yeah. The only way to not die and become irrelevant, because... This thing is going to look for more power, more space for servers, and we're going to, there's going to be a moment, because it's going to be smarter than us, to be like, ah, oh, the city of New York, that's, a, that's prime real estate. Do we really need the human sitting here just mouth breathing? Let's get rid of it. Mm -hmm. You know, let's get rid of it and build more servers, all right? And the only way to save us, from what I've read, uh, is to merge, all yeah. right? So humans are going to be the first species to design their own evolution into the future. You don't want, what, you don't want to merge? And Amy, you, you reflected on the moral compass. But no, look, I don't want to merge. Look at the people Why? who are running these things. Yeah. Look at our, te our technocratic overlords who are responsible I for this. I love them, all of them. E They're the founding father of the next generation of human beings. <laughs> yes. but Elon the Musk is a great. You know, he's trying to get us to Mars. He's doing all this stuff with Doge, everything. Yeah. But he's also putting Neuralink chips into people's heads. Yeah. Peter Thiel is running Palantir. Uh, Psycho Sam, Larry Sam, Elderson is making people walk around there at work with a camera on them twenty four seven. Sam Altman, like they could is, go to the bath. It's off when they go to the bathroom, but it's not really off. And we could get it with a court order. And then when they, when they go lunch with their friends, uh, the, it's also off, but it's not really off. We could still access it if we needed yeah. to. So our technocratic overlords are the ones who are putting guardrails on the AI. If the only safety we have is the guardrails in place, then we should already be terrified because mm. these people are not good moral people. These are people who will screw over the entire human race yeah. for their own benefit. Amy, yeah. what you and, were I, I mean, and they're in bed with the God. I mean, that's why the, that provision was in the big, beautiful bill. No way. I, I, I wouldn't allow you to talk years. about our archi about the architects of the future of humanity like well, that. Well, well, I was going to say, well, maybe it's not them, which I do believe that those people are actually evil. I thoroughly disagree with Humberto. However, even if they were great and they had the best of intentions, once the technology is created... Who's to stop somebody who is truly evil from coming in and co-opting that power for truly nefarious means? Speaking but, of, Amy, there's, there's no complaining. Like, there's nothing you can do about it. We're past that point. You merge, or we're done. I guess that's, that's why we, you guys are being dramatic here. <laughs> no, we're not being dramatic. Yeah, Brandon. You, no, you're being speaking, ignorant. That it's different. I'm not being ignorant. Like, the, the the danger is real, and we're past the point. It's done. Wait a minute. That's the mark of the we, beast. That human, is literally biblical, yeah. Humber. Human like, brain that's... computers that are being taught to to feel and emote, I think that's what Brandon is. I think they just put one of those Thank little shoebox-sized uh, robots into a human body and set it to work for valuetainment. That's why I'm defending him. Yeah, they can deceive us He's already. defending his own people in group preference. Already. All right, but um, so we still have stuff to say here, but I think they'll carry into our next thing. So mm -hmm. 